the good thing about using data lights is um, you, you focus them so well, and I could like use three data lights in one interview. I can lose like use like three or four data lights just to paint in the background, just to make it, just to give it a style and a mood. So it's, it's very good, very controllable. Like I said, I can talk about my experience with the old range, and I'm just I'm more of a overwhelmed. I think they're really really good. I've seen uh, demonstrations where they're dropped in while so they're still lit. They're dropped in water and stuff like that. So I think it's great. I think they're really good. Abel Cine is my dealer in, in Burbank, and they had a workshop that Dato uh, gave. And I just signed up for it because I was curious about, I had heard the Dato name, I was curious about it, I had no interest in buying it, but the demonstration was so damn impressive. You know, I mean, he, he knocked the light into a tank of water, and, you know, he, he the, you can you could focus them. You, uh, uh, you know you had these teeny little scrims. Everything was small and lightweight, and and very easy for one person to deal with. And it all fit in this nice rolling suitcase and came with everything. And you know I, I had a gobo projector in there as well. And I had never seen anything like that. That had so many solutions in one small kit that one guy could carry around pretty easily. And so I, I bit, you know, I, I bit the bullet. I, I, I made the purchase and felt nervous about it. But I've used those lights every day I've ever worked, and they've never failed me. Again, this is the DLH4. See how bright that is? It's an incredibly powerful little lamp. And people say, "Can I key with that? Do you want to sit under that for two hours?" Exactly. It's not comfy, but it's a powerful little lamp. Uh, what I'm going to show you is something called a DP1. This is a little attachment that fits on the front <coughs> of the dado lights. It has a lens on the front of it. What this allows you to do, because you've attenuated the light off the background, you can do things with it. This is a little bit cheesy, but it's an idea of how you can simply and easily change the texture of that background. You can put colors, whatever you like, into it, but it's giving you the flexibility to manipulate your background in terms of what it looks like, in terms of its texture. If you've got a flat, boring background, please, please, please don't get the cheese plant and drag it in. You see it all the time. It's just to get rid of that boring, flat background. There's a million and one gobos that be made. The company called Roscoe make them. They're brilliant. This is uh, one of the standard kind of um, leaf breakups. But what I wanted to show you is, at the moment, where does that background appear to be in terms of the subject? This is really important in terms of, again, the psychology of showing people an image and getting the image to actually tell a story. At the moment, that background is slapped behind the person's head. But what you can do with this is watch very carefully as I throw this out of focus. Look what your head does and tells you about the image when the background goes soft. It's not very smooth, but... Suddenly, as the background goes soft, the subject comes away from the background. And instantly, you get a feeling that there's a distance there. And that distance is important, because even though that wall could be a couple of feet away, if you project an out-of-focus soft image on it, it will give you the impression that you've got something three-dimensional there, because your brain says, if it's out of focus, it's got to be further away. So again, instantly, you're starting to create the illusion, this illusion that you've got something three-dimensional there, which is quite exciting when in a really simple situation. This is just a talking head against a wall. So, you know, you can play with all sorts of colors, shapes, et cetera, et cetera, to, to get interesting, interesting backgrounds and colors. It doesn't take an awful lot of effort with these tools because they're just designed to do this simply. They're designed by cameramen who know what we need to actually make craft simple, quick images.
I would never give up my dados because I can have four small little lights and carry them around with me and that gives me so many options for accents, you know, in a scene to create a sense of highlight, shadow, highlight, shadow. And that makes things interesting. And I'm a one man band. You know, the fact that I can do that, carrying my light kit, you know, around right behind me with one hand is a great credit to Data Lights. I wouldn't ever go on a shoot without my Ditos. Uh, they are my favorite light and uh, they just work wonderfully. Production value is way up there, and uh, it's, a, it's a great light. But no other light that I know of is really acceptable to project a pattern onto skin, and the Dito works wonderfully. And that's uh, my favorite thing to do with the Dito. I do use them for other things. If you've got a, a bottle or something in the background and you want to put a special on it and light just that up, you can zoom in on that with your Dito and do just what you want to do. And that's a wonderful option as well. And also what's really good about the Dado, or interesting rather, is that it, it, it's used right from the sort of smallest production uh, right up to the largest sort of productions. You know, you'll find Dado, Dado kit on set most of the time. And, uh, I think that's, that's tribute to the design and, 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 and what the light's able to do. And they're not overly fragile like other lights. You can throw them around a bit more. Not that you should, but... I'm very excited to see more product coming from Dado and uh, I, as always, just expect the best. 150 watts. Uh, you can do so much more with them. And even on a bigger job, with like uh, you've got a speaker at a conference or something, you can mount the light from quite some distance away yes. and light him, uh, door it down so that the light's just on him. Uh, from a distance, and it's got the, po the power to do it. The Dado lights, yeah, have always been good. I've got three 24 volt four head kits, and I've got Fellini one by one panels, and yeah, that's about it, I think, on the Dado at the moment. But uh, switch them on, they work, always good, yeah. Even though Dado light's not the only light in my kit, uh, it's the essential lights that I keep in my kit. It's the ones I want to bring onto set, and it's the one I always pull out first on set. Uh, from the, the 150s, giving a great little eye light to kicker, to those Fellinini's, it, it, it as a great soft source. But I wouldn't be on a set without my Ditos. What I do want to show you is one or two other really interesting tools made again by Roscoe, they're prismatic gobos, which are prismatic glass stuck in bits of silicon, which fit in these projectors and throw, that's it, in focus. And as you throw it out of focus, you're getting some quite interesting textures and things in the background that you can actually break it up, make it interesting. There's a million and one different colors, uh, blues, greens, kaleidoscope effects. Um, so it's one of those things that is up to you in terms of um, creating interesting images, interesting backgrounds. If you want to put a logo in there, I could put another gobo up with your company name or product on it and put it straight into the background so you're not having to do it in post-production. I'm an organic filmmaker. Whatever you get right here in front of the lens saves you an awful lot of time in post-production. You want to spend your time in post-production effectively and positively, not correcting rubbish. Garbage in, garbage out. You make this right and make it look good, and when you finish in post-production, it's going to look polished and glossy. I can't imagine doing a shoot without, um, without, without Dado's equipment. I just can't imagine it. We all, we all use it. I mean, if you're doing a newsreel, you're doing a big movie, we all use Dado equipment. Well, I started using them right at the beginning, this in the 80s when they first came out, and, and they're godsend. 
get a kit of four, and uh, they're so versatile. But they, uh, they soon established themselves, certainly in commercials, and, and that was part of the, you know, this sort of light was part of that movement forward.